All right, so related rates, the fun word problems. I have a blast with these. So I have the radius of a spherical balloon is increasing at a rate of three centimeters a second. So the radius of the balloon is getting bigger. You want to find the rate of change for the surface area, which is the outside part of the balloon, at the exact moment in time that the radius is 10 centimeters. So what the hell, why did I even say this like this? You know, the balloon is growing. But what you're going to do is you're going to freeze time at the exact moment that the radius is 10. The radius is constantly changing, but you're going to stop it when it reaches 10. I mean, you can stop it when it reaches 100 or whatever. I guess if it gets too big, the balloon will pop eventually. Now, you need a formula. So step one in the list of steps that I wrote for you in the class notes said, write a formula down if they don't give you one and identify all of the quantities that the problem told you. So first of all, the surface area, I mean, I'm just going to write a big S. I could write SA for surface area, but I'm just going to write S for surface. It's 4 pi r squared. Of, of course, you all know the formula for the surface area of a sphere. Why, why wouldn't you use this every day? All right, so this formula will obviously be given to you, or I'll just tell it to you, all right? I mean, or I'll put it on the paper. So this is the surface area of a sphere. Now, what did they tell you? Well, let's do the easy part first. They tell you that the moment when the radius is 10, so I'm going to put r is 10. That's the easy part. You don't have to put centimeters. We're not in a physics class. I'm not going to go nuts over the units. So that's the easy one to identify. Now, I got to read everything else carefully. The radius is increasing at a rate of. OK, so as soon as you see at a rate of, that's dt. And they're saying radius. So they just told me that dr dt is 3. Again, uh, ignore the centimeters per second. You don't have to put that. The radius is changing. That's what this represents. dr dt means that the radius is changing over time. And this is, you know, if you don't have this, you're not going to be able to solve the problem. Now, find the rate of change for the surface area. At some point when I do my derivative, I'm going to end up with a ds dt. Well, this is what they want. The rate of change of the surface area is going to be ds dt. This is what I'm looking for. I'm trying to solve for that. My question mark didn't come out right. OK, so that's all step one. Write the formula and write down all of the given information that's in the problem. They didn't give me anything else. They told me the radius. They told me the rate at which the radius is increasing. That's why this is positive. And then they told me to figure out the rate at which the surface area is changing. I'm guessing it's going up. This should be a positive number. I mean, if the radius is getting bigger, then the surface area should be expanding, too. Now, step two is to take the derivative of this thing with respect to t. So you're going to do d dt of this whole formula. So I mean, I'm taking up too much space by writing it, but I want you to see that step. So now I'm going to do my derivative. The derivative with respect to t of s is 1, right? The derivative of s is 1. It's a letter. You take the derivative of a letter. If, if you take the derivative of x, it's 1. So the derivative of s is 1 times ds dt. Yay, that's what I'm trying to solve for. It's over there. Now, I got to be careful here. I have 4 pi. What the hell do you do with 4 pi? You don't do anything. It's in front of the r squared. I'm taking the derivative. r is the variable, right? 4 is a constant. Pi is a constant. Oh, there's 0. The derivative is 0. No. I mean, if I told you to take the derivative of 4 pi x, right? You would just drop the x off and the 4 pi would stay. So when you're taking a derivative, be really careful. You're taking a derivative of r squared. The 4 pi goes along for the ride. It's in front as a constant. So the derivative of r squared is 2r times dr dt. Where is this coming from? Implicit differentiation. Whenever you take the derivative of any of these things, you're going to get d of that letter over dt. So I took the derivative of s, I got ds dt. I took the derivative of r, I got dr dt. And r squared, right? The derivative of r squared is 2r. So this is what you get when you take the derivative with respect to t. Now I have a ds dt. I don't know what it is. I have an r. I know it's supposed to be 10. I have a dr dt. I know it's supposed to be 3. I'm going to put everything I wrote in step one into this formula now. And then once I do that, I'm going to know 
what this dude is. You don't need that one there, right? We're not stupid. I can just cross out the one. So four pi has to stay there. So DSDT, I'm a little concerned about running at the bottom here. So I'm gonna try my best. Four pi stays. Don't be putting 3.14 here. <laughs> and don't be putting 180 here. <laughs> pi here is not 180 degrees. I don't have sines and cosines. Pi here is 3.14. Radians do not replace the pi. Leave the pi in your answer. The radius was 10. And dr dt was three. That's the rate at which the radius was increasing. Now just multiply all this crap out and you're done. So let's see. Three times two is six times four is 24 times 10 is 240. I, can, I don't have a calculator, so I got to do it smart. I'm going to multiply by 10 last because it's easiest. <laughs> or you could do four times two is eight times three is 24. Either way, times 10 is 240. Pi goes along to the right. So the answer is 240 pi. Okay, so that's the first related rate question. All right, second example. I have the volume of a cube, cube, and again, think ice cube, is decreasing at a rate of 20 centimeters cubed per second. Why cubed? Because it's a cube, <laughs> because it's got length, width, and height. Find the rate of change, aha, uh -huh, dt, for the sides x, all the sides here, it's a cube. You have three sides, a length, a width, and a height. They're all x. I want to find the rate of change for the sides at the moment that they're five centimeters. So this, this ice cube is melting. It's shrinking, right? They're telling you that the volume is decreasing. So the ice cube is getting smaller. That means that the sides are getting smaller. As time is going by, the sides are shrinking. So I want to stop that moment in time when they reach five centimeters and figure out the rate of change at that exact moment. It would be different if I stopped it when it was seven centimeters or eight centimeters. I'm choosing to freeze time at that moment and figure out what the rate of change is then. So again, step one is always write a formula. What's the volume of a cube? Length, width, height, but they're all X. So it's X times X times X. So the volume is X cubed. Volume is X cubed. Now read. They tell you that the volume of the cube is decreasing at a rate of 20. So they just told me what dv dt is. The volume is decreasing at a rate of 20 cubic centimeters. I don't give a damn about cubic centimeters. I'm not in the physics class. All right, now I want to find the rate of change for the sides. That's dx dt. My sides are called x. Dx dt is what the sides are changing. That's the rate at which they change. I don't know what that is, but I am going to stop the sides from shrinking when they reach five. So they're telling me that x is going to be five at the end of the problem when I plug in. So that's step one. Write your formula, write everything that they gave you, and then get ready to take the derivative. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t, time. This problem is all about time. So take the derivative of both sides. I mean, this is pretty easy. The derivative of V is dV dt. I mean, the derivative of V is one times dV dt. The derivative of x to the third is three x squared times dx dt. This is nicer because you don't have to worry about a pi. Any, any problem with a circle or a sphere, you're gonna have pi to deal with, and you just leave it in the answer. We did that already. Now, they, they gave me a bunch of stuff. I'm looking for this this time. They told me the rate at which the volume is changing, it's going down, it's, it's shrinking, this ice cube is melting. So I'm gonna put negative 20 here. They told me that X was five. So wherever I see X, I'm gonna put five. I, I don't know what DX DT is, so I, I have to, Leave that there. I'm going to multiply all this out and then I'm going to divide it over to there. So let's do that. I, I'm going to do it here because I won't have enough room. So step three continued negative 20. Now let's, let's, let's show how smart we are in calculus. <laughs> five times five is not 10, like my remedial students think. And you can't hop the fence with the power on, right? You can't just go, oh, three times five is 15, 15 squared, hey, 225. I got it. No. 
Five squared is 25, and then you multiply by three. So you get 75 dx dt. So now remember, your goal is to tell me what rate the side is changing at. So I just need this alone over there. So just divide. So you get dx dt. I like it on the left. Divide, right? Just divide this down to the bottom. Now, you know, I'm not giving you a calculator. So <laughs> if I'm grading you and all of a sudden I see you give me a decimal here, I'm going to be really uh, unhappy and confused. So let's see. I can divide them both by five, right? 20 divided by five is four. And let's see, 75 divided by five is 15, I believe. Now, does it make sense that my answer is negative? Well, let's see. My ice cube was melting. The volume of my ice cube, which is the space inside of it, was decreasing, shrinking. So it makes sense that the sides are shrinking. So my sides are decreasing at a rate of whatever the hell 4 over 15 is. It's like 0.2 something, right? 0.28, maybe 0.3. So this is, this is what you do, as always. Write the formula. Write the given information. Take the derivative with respect to t. Be careful. Implicit differentiation here. Plug in everything you know and then solve.